The Suicide Squad, I mean, Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie is finally in theaters, proving we really are in an age where any superhero movie can be made if they want to make it. Seriously, despite what you may have thought about the movie, it's awesome to get the likes of Huntress or Black Canary or even Harley Quinn's hyenas on the silver screen. Like, my grandpa knows who Superman is. He certainly doesn't know who Cassandra f Kane is. But with this movie's release, I'm reminded of how little we really got of the Birds of Prey characters in the DC animated universe. I'm speaking, of course, about the multiple shows, movies, comics, and other mediums that can connected properties like Batman the Animated Series, Justice League Unlimited, Batman Beyond, and a number of others over the course of the 1990s and early 2000s, and which still pops up from time to time to this day. In Justice League Unlimited, or JLU as the kids say, we did get appearances by Black Canary and Huntress, though never in an official Birds of Prey team-up. There was an episode penned for JLU's second season that would have brought these birds and their bat sister together, but it never happened. So today, we're going to take a look at what could have been the DCAU's Birds of Prey, as well as some other versions of the characters that almost made the cut. Before we get too into things, please leave a like on this video. It really helps out with the YouTube robots showing the video to the right people, and it also activates the pleasure center of your brain for the remainder of the video. Go ahead, try it. Plus, leave a comment below with what you thought of the new Birds of Prey movie. Was it the best thing ever? Did it suck big time? Was you and McGregor too hot topic or just the right amount? So who are the Birds of Prey, really? Yes, we've got the lineup from the movie, but the team first showed up in their self-titled comic in 1999, with middling appearances in other titles beforehand. This series has run for hundreds of issues over several different volumes, following the adventures of a female-centric team of crime fighters under the remote guidance of Barbara Gordon, aka Oracle. The concept gained enough popularity that a live-action television show was greenlit for the WB network in 2002, which is often either known because it featured Mark Hamill doing the Joker's voice, because it cast Sloane from Ferris Bueller as a weird-ass Harley Quinn, or because it only lasted 13 episodes. Yep, the show was abruptly cancelled due to terrible ratings, though it did find a glimmer of new life in the opening of part three of the recent CW Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover. And of course, the CW shows themselves have often paid homage to the Birds of Prey, with appearances by Huntress, many and varied Black Canaries, and a nod here and there to Oracle, along with the fact that all of these shows have basically the same awkward, low-budget, teenage angst CW aesthetic, but that's neither here nor there. Even though we did get this pretty shui Birds of Prey musical number in the 2011 episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, the one and only Birds of Prey. We never got a fully realized Birds of Prey team in animation ever. With the announcement that a seemingly DCEU set Aquaman animated series is underway, maybe things could change for the old birds. But for now, the closest thing we ever got was a loose episode idea for Justice League Unlimited that was never even turned into a full script. So what did we see of these characters in the DC animated universe? And could it have been more? Everything's okay, folks. In fact, it's fabulous. Over on the Batman show, Barbara Gordon had been established as Batgirl in the animated universe since her costume debut in Shadow of the Bat, a late 1993 Batman the Animated Series episode. She had continued to lock in her place as a member of the DCAU Bat family through the streamlined show that basically hit Control R on BTAS, The New Batman Adventures. And there was even a movie, one of only six in the DCAU so far, all about her. Well, about Mr. Freeze kidnapping her, but still. She even became a central character in the Batman Beyond cartoon, a series set 40 years after the new Batman adventures, where Barbara has taken over from her late father as Gotham City Police Commissioner. But in this show, Barbara seemingly had full, unimpaired use of her legs, and although this was a future full of unexplainable technologies, albeit alongside giant clunky cell phones and CDs, it led us all to believe Barbara never had the accident that turned her into Oracle, in any sort of killing joke-esque manner. Years after Batman Beyond's cancellation, we did get a comic alluding to Barbara having Wayne Power's legs, but this is decidedly not canon to the animated universe. And we actually finally have a video now to prove it! Though, shameless plug time, you should go read the latest issue of our Legacies of the DCAU webcomic, where we have turned her into Oracle by the DCAU's 2019. Link 
in the description. <clears throat> anyway, as for the other members of the Birds of Prey, Huntress didn't show up properly until the debut JLU episode, Initiation, in a costume design that was eventually phased out in favor of her more hush-looking appearance by the second season. But she did make an appearance in an issue of the Batman and Robin Adventures, a companion comic to Batman the Animated Series. In issue number 19, Duty of the Huntress, we meet Helena Bertinelli, a daughter of crime lord Don Bertinelli, who embarks on a revenge quest to put an end to her family's murderers as the Huntress, crossing paths with Batman and Robin. While this is technically Huntress's first appearance in this universe, her origin contradicts that which we saw on screen later in JLU's Double Date, both in terms of her age and the manner of her family's deaths. So while this comic exists in a world informed by Batman the Animated Series, it doesn't quite fit with the rest of the universe that spun out of it. But there were plans to bring Huntress into the animated DCAU as part of Batman Beyond. According to producer Bruce Tim on the Comics Continuum news website circa 1999, we were getting a lot of pressure from lots of different areas saying, you have to do a new Batgirl, and we're not really against the idea, but we just don't want to have a recurring Batgirl character as much as the old Batman show had. We don't want to have someone who teams up with him every episode. But we were talking about doing an updated version of the Huntress, so that may happen. He doubled down on this later, affirming, the only established DC hero that will probably show up in Batman Beyond is the Huntress, just because we think she's an interesting character, and we kind of want to do another female crime fighter along the lines of Batgirl, but we didn't want to just do Batgirl Beyond. We thought the Huntress would be a natural. We're actually working on a story for that right now, so the Huntress will probably be on Batman Beyond. Uh, of course, this never happened for unknown reasons, and then the Earth-12 comics turned around and did a Batgirl Beyond anyway. Way back before the Justice League cartoon was even in development, its predecessor, Superman the Animated Series, was slowly but surely introducing new super characters to the DCAU with guest stars like Batman, Aquaman, The Flash, Doctor Fate, and Green Lantern Kyle Rayner. And while we eventually saw artwork depicting a few early Justice League team lineups featuring some of these characters, none of these were the version we wound up with on November 17th, 2001. In one early pitch concept drawn by Tim, Black Canary was even considered for the starting lineup of the Justice League, alongside other heroes we would eventually see make full appearances like Hawkgirl, The Question, Vixen, and Green Arrow. We saw several hints of Canary throughout the pre-Justice League era of the animated universe, but only ever in vaguely connected tie-in material, such as the Adventures in the DC Universe comic, which was often only visually styled after the DCAU, or in Bruce Timm artwork depicting what she may have looked like had she appeared on Batman the Animated Series. And actually, she was supposed to. In the 1998 behind-the-scenes book Batman Animated, BTAS producer and writer Paul Dini revealed he wanted Black Canary to make an appearance on the show, pairing with Catwoman. The Fox Network, on the assumption that kids won't watch a kid's show unless kids are in it, soon began insisting that Robin be prominently featured in every episode. When Fox changed the title from Batman the Animated Series to The Adventures of Batman and Robin, they laid down the law. No story premise was to be considered unless it was either a Robin story or one in which the Boy Wonder played a key role. A potentially intriguing Catwoman Black Canary team up was interrupted in mid-pitch to the network by their demand, where's Robin? When the writers asked if they could omit Robin from just this one episode, Fox obliged by omitting the entire story. In fact, we even got a glimpse of the Canary Catwoman idea in this artwork by Bruce Timm. That old, never-produced Catwoman vs. Black Canary BTAS story, it never got past the vaguely talking about the possibility stage. Nothing was ever even set down on paper. Tim followed up with on the anime superhero forums, then known as Toon Zone. But one of the most puzzling pieces of DCAU Black Canary lore comes from the strangest place you can think of. And no, I'm not talking about the Phantom Zone or Ichthultu's weird topsy-turvy dimension or anything like that. I'm I'm talking about the streets. In an episode of the new Batman Adventures titled The Ultimate Thrill, you know, the Roxy Rocket one where she makes all the weird sex noises that will most certainly catch the attention of anyone in the other room if you're watching it too loud. Yeah. 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 Batgirl gets information from a set of, well, prostitutes. And wouldn't you know it, this one looks basically exactly like what Black Canary wound up looking like on JLU. And yeah, there's definitely a reason for that. The Black Canary Hooker first appeared in an episode of the new Batman Adventures, Bruce Timm explained on the Drawing Board website. Darwin Cook boarded the scene, thought it'd be funny if one of the hookers looked kind of like Black Canary. Shane Glines did the model based on Darwin Cook's board sketch. Cut to several years later, I'm getting ready to design Black Canary for JLU, suddenly I remember the old Black Canary Hooker design, dig it up, and damn, it's still pretty damn good. Swap the miniskirt for a one-piece, trade in pumps for cuff boots, and voila, one less character to design from scratch. And for the continuity-minded out there, no, Dinah doesn't have any street-walking skeletons in her closet. I figure Black Canary was already around as a superhero in the TNBA days, and the hooker based her look on Black Canaries. Yeah, that kind of works. This hooker look-alike 
hooker-like, appeared again in the uncut version of the animated movie Batman Beyond Return of the Joker a couple years later, but was replaced with another background extra for the censored cut of the film, who looks suspiciously like Marty from the Superman episode Feeding Time. The multiple cuts of that movie, it's a long story. Go check out our side-by-side -side comparison video to see all the differences. So even after all that, neither Black Canary nor Huntress showed up for realsies until Justice League Unlimited, effectively retconning or overriding any previous appearance they had in any tie-in media. And while we did see a weird non-canon version of their team in Batman Shadow of Sinzu, the weird non-canon sequel comic to the Rise of Sinzu video game, and these characters continued to headline episodes of the JLU show, the Birds of Prey just barely missed a full proper appearance in the DC Animated Universe. Here's what happened. We'll return in just a moment, but first, a word from our sponsor. Oh my god. Somewhere back there is a bunch of books uh, in boxes, and they're really heavy. And every time that I have to move, I really do not like moving any of you can't see them, they're in there. You know, if I used today's sponsor, I wouldn't have as many books. Most of them are my wives, I don't know. Today, Audible is giving you the chance to get a free 30-day trial membership. And that, oh, don't sit on these. This would, don't sit on these. That comes with one free audiobook. They've got so many audiobooks on there. I'm not allowed to say a specific number. They tell you in the thing, don't say a specific number, just say an unmatched selection of audiobooks. I don't know why I chose this as the backdrop. Just a mess. This is a litter box. If you're thinking, I get a free audiobook, which audiobook should I listen to? Hey, up here. Batman, I typed in Batman. The 1989 Michael Keaton Batman movie novelization is on Audible and it's narrated by Roddy McDowell, who voiced the Mad Hatter on Batman the Animated Series. So this is the perfect option, the perfect audiobook for you. So do all of that, audibletrial.com slash watchtower database. I'm not sure why it's tr audible trial and not just audible. I asked the guy and he hasn't gotten back to me yet. audibletrial.com slash watchtower database. Three, not three, 30 day trial for free and it, uh, one free audiobook. audibletrial.com slash watchtower database. Go do it. Now back to whatever this is, was. Have, bye. In January 2018, Scooby-Doo team up number 34 hit shelves. <laughs> Just kidding, but uh, go read this comic too. They're all pretty great. No, the Almost Birds of Prey that I'm talking about was an episode of Justice League Unlimited pitched by Dwayne McDuffie, creator of Static Shock, back around 2004. For various reasons, the episode eventually morphed into what we've come to know as Double Date, where Green Arrow and Black Canary go head-to-head -head with the newly acquainted duo of Huntress and the Question, as both pairs race to take down Steven Mandragora, the mob boss responsible for the deaths of Huntress's family, in this continuity. But it started off as a Birds of Prey team-up, featuring Barbara Gordon, and even with appearances by Nightwing and Man Bat. I pitched a Birds of Prey episode where, after Batgirl breaks a leg, Batman orders her off the case and she creates Oracle in retaliation, McDuffie discussed on his now-defunct official website. Huntress and Black Canary do her legwork without ever meeting her in person and crack the case. Batman's suspicious, but can't prove it. The story didn't work out, but we did get the terrific Gail Simone's double date script instead. It wasn't until a few years later, after JLU left the air, that Bruce Tim hopped on the Toon Zone forums again and revealed more details about the proposed episode. Short version? Barbara gets injured, Batman says, rest up, get well, no crime fighting, young lady. She's not just in a wheelchair, she's in traction. Barbara gets restless, defies Batman's orders, and starts working on this week's nefarious plot on her computer. Some nonsense about Kirk Langstrom creating an army of man-bats. She realizes she needs mobile help, calls Dick Grayson. Cut to Dick's apartment where he's making out like crazy with some gorgeous new gal. The phone rings and rings and rings. He distractedly picks up the phone, still making out. Barbara starts to talk. He doesn't even hear her, just drops the phone back on the cradle. Barbara gives her phone the stink eye and growls, Dick! At which point Barbara recruits Black Canary and Huntress to be her field agents, and she herself assumes a temporary Oracle-type role. The army of man-bats gets their butts soundly kicked, yada yada yada, and for the record, Gail Simone had nothing whatsoever to do with that version of the story. All in all, Double Date is a much better story. While I agree that Double Date is probably the better of the two options, the Birds of Prey versus a man-bat army sounds like a really fun episode. We never even got to see man-bat in an updated TNA
NBA-ish style, except for one comic. And of course, no matter what, I'm always going to be titillated by DCAU stuff we never got to see. Barbara breaking her leg is even a perfect way to temporarily bring in Oracle without upsetting the Batman Beyond continuity. But what's interesting is that we actually got a version of this Man-Bat army in 2014's Batman Beyond 2.0, the Batman storyline, which is either a big coincidence or evidence that this story was at least somewhat adapted down the line, even including that comics series regular Dick Grayson, formerly Nightwing. So, why didn't this episode happen the way it was intended to? Well, Double Date writer Gail Simone shed some light on that in an interview with The Pulse magazine. For those unaware, Simone is a DC Comics writer who helmed the Birds of Prey comic series for several years, starting with issue number 56 after the departure of previous writer Chuck Dixon, creator of the team, as well as characters like Bane and Stephanie Brown. Simone was brought on to write the JLU episode because of her work on the Birds of Prey comic, which she was thrilled to do, as being part of the DCAU was considered, quote, a very huge deal in animation. Originally, we were looking at doing something even more like the current Birds of Prey, but due to some weird rights thing, Oracle slash Barbara Gordon wasn't available. So rather than try to do a halfway Birds of Prey, they wisely went a different route. They told me from the first email that they didn't want me to try to match any previous tone in particular. They absolutely wanted it to sound like a Gail Simone script, which is incredibly flattering because I'm a huge fan of Dwayne McDuffie and Bruce Timm both. So that attitude was very Birds of Prey, I think. That weird rights thing that Simone mentions is almost certainly what fans have come to to dub the Bat Embargo, a copyright ban on Batman characters from appearing on Justice League Unlimited around this time, due to the controlling studio's belief that audiences would be too confused seeing Bat people on both JLU and the concurrent cartoon The Batman on Kids WB, a practice which we still see hints of even today, like the Suicide Squad on Arrow disappearing around the time of that movie. There's probably a whole video to be done about the Bat Embargo. But for the time being, all we can do is imagine what this Birds of Prey vs. Man Bat episode might have been like. And in the end, perhaps situations like that one wound up giving us better DCAU content than we would have gotten without them. We had no plans to use BTAS characters in JLU, other than the occasional villain cameo, Bruce Timm stated on Toon Zone. There aren't any BTAS-centric stories we were dying to tell that we couldn't because of the embargo. He elaborated in another post, It's DC's playground, we just get to play there. Almost every single time they've said no to our requests, we've managed to find a creative way around it, and more often than not, it's turned out for the better. Double Date is a thousand times better ep than the straight up Birds of Prey story we originally pitched, and as a bonus, we got the funky question Huntress romance out of it, which ultimately added emotional resonance to the four-part Cadmus finale. But we didn't get to see Barbara Gordon one last time, you say. Well, boo freaking who. Sure, that would have been a nice one shot, but look at the big picture. We lost the battle and won the war. Bottom line, DC has been very, very good to us overall. They've given us a lot of leeway to mess around with their characters, whole armies of their characters. So if there were a few characters that we would have liked to use but couldn't, eh, I'm not losing any sleep over over it, and don't feel there were any missed opportunities because of it. Can this finally be the last word on the subject, please? That was 2006, so <clears throat> I guess not. But what do you think about all of this? Was Double Date a better episode than the Birds of Prey story that could have been? It seems to me like the closest thing that we ever did get to this team in the DCAU was the Gotham Girls webtoon and comic series in the early 2000s. Or maybe these couple pages in Birds of Prey number 86 that were drawn by Bruce Timm. But would you have liked to see a Birds of Prey cartoon on its own? The new movie's villain, Black Mask, did appear in the second volume of the Batman Adventures comic, so he's fair game, and plenty of other comic book Birds of Prey cast members showed up in the DCAU like Catwoman, Big Barda, Vixen, Katana, who was I guess kind of represented by Sukuri, or even Hawk and Dove. Wait, Hawk makes a lot of sense. Why is he not always on the team? If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it every Sunday, please be sure to click subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a single dang little thing. We will get 100,000 subscribers in 2020. Be a part of something beautiful. Oh, and also like, comment, go read our comic, all that good stuff. The stuff I mentioned doing before that you may have forgotten about until just now because the video is basically over. A big, big thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. You all seriously keep this ship afloat because sometimes we get 100,000 views on a video, and sometimes we get 1,000 views on a video. We never know. It's pretty funny. But we do know that there are those, like all the wonderful human beings on this list, who are here to make this all possible. If you'd like to see your name on the list next time, head on over to patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower and check out all the shui rewards you can get. Is it okay that I used shui twice in one video? That's probably not enough. And hey, if you can't afford a buck a month or whatever, we also have a merch store. That's what the YouTube people call merchandise, which you can find at the link in the description or the store tab on our channel page. All sorts of funny, funny memes to be worn, sipped from, or wrapped around your giant clunky Batman Beyond era cell phone. Thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day.
Okay, bored now. Goodbye.